So today I thought I'd share with you a slightly different form of fossil preparation technique, and that's the use of weak acids. And this is probably my best example uh, of a fossil that's been pre prepared with, with acid. And this is an ichthyosaur jaw uh, from Lyme Regis. It's the very front of the rostrum, and it's packed with amazing teeth. I can't claim to have uh, prepared this fossil, that's for sure. This was prepared by an absolute master in acid preparation because it really is not an easy technique to, uh, to master. And as you can see, all of the details of all of the teeth have been preserved and all of the limestone has been removed from be between these, uh, these teeth. If you were using mechanical tools uh, like aerobraders, this would be really, really difficult to get in between all of these teeth and, uh, and expose them. You can even see with this acid prep technique how each of the teeth um, have formed within the, uh, within the tooth canal of these ichthyosaurs. It really is an absolutely uh, spectacular fossil uh, to demonstrate, if you're good at this and you can master it, how amazing fossils can be when you prep them with acid. And today I'm only going to talk about acetic acid preparation, which is a weak acid. Um, and that works well on limestone fossils, but not all limestone fossils. Here's an example of a series of uh, plesiosaur verts, um, again from Lyme Regis, that have been prepped using acid. The matrix that surrounds uh, these bones is, is a limestone matrix made of calcium carbonate, which the acetic acid will react with. Uh, but the bone has been mineralized into calcium phosphate, which the acetic acid doesn't uh, attack. These are pretty robust bones, um, so they're not fragile and they haven't got lots of calcite veins running through them. If you do have uh, fossils which either the fossil is made of calcite or you have lots of calcite veins which run through uh, the bone, then it's going to be very hard to use acid prep because obviously all of those um, calcite veins are going to dissolve in the same way as the matrix will and potentially you'll just end up with a crumbled mess at the bottom of a bucket. So it's really important to know that the fossil that you're picking is is going to respond really well to fossil prep with acid technique. Now I'm not going to claim to be an expert in acid prep and although I've done a few pieces there are far more uh, experienced preppers with acid out there. However I've certainly know enough to give you a basic summary of how it works. I'm going to use an example here um, of a rolled ichthyosaur jaw and show you how that comes out over a series of hours. Okay, firstly, you know, this is a video where we do talk about acid. And although acetic acid is classified as a, a weaker acid, it's still an acid. And naturally, you need to make sure that there are safety precautions. You need to make sure that the space that you're using this in is well ventilated. And you obviously need to use gloves. It's just really important to get into best practice, regardless of acid that you're using, that you do all of the proper safety requirements for the acid as is written on the bottles. That's critical. And these acids are going to be diluted and one of the most important tips with any dilution of acid with water for example is that you add the acid to the water you don't add the water to the acid obviously if you're adding water to concentrated acid the acid could splash that's really bad so what you want to do is add any acid to the water so that it's already diluted when it hits the water that's just a critical safety piece now, the acetic acid here is a 20% concentrate. There are further concentrations out there, but we're going to dilute this down to about 5% acetic acid uh, with, uh, with water. So why buy anything more concentrate, which obviously has uh, more corrosive power? So I only purchased 20% acetic acid for this work. The second chemical which is really important in this technique is um, a consolidant to help protect the bone. Now in this I'm using Paraloid B72 that comes in these inert beads but when they're added to acetone generally about five, four to five percent ratio of Paraloid and 95 percent acetone uh, that creates a, a consolidant which helps seep into the bone and really protect it from the corrosive uh, uh, power of the acid. All right, so let's give a test sample a go. And as I said earlier, this is a rolled bit of ichthyosaur jaw from Lyme Regis. Um, it's got some teeth ex uh, ready to be exposed within it, but they'd be pretty hard to get out with mechanical techniques. Um, now, the bit that I forgot to film was when I covered the exposed bone in Paraloid B72, that chemical we just talked about. That's seeped in now into the bone, and that's given it a good level of protection. However, one of the things I tend to do, um, and many preppers tend to do, 
with acid prep is also add an extra level of protection to the bone, which is just using a layer of candle wax, which is brushed onto the exposed bone. And then you let that dry before you then put it into the, into the acid. And it just gives that extra layer of protection because you know the acid will seep everywhere once this is submerged in the, um, in the diluted acid. So you wanna make sure that the exposed bone is well protected. As you can see here, all of the candle wax has now dried and uh, on all aspects of the exposed bone, that's now been fully protected with paraloid and then candle wax. So it's now the time to put it into the, uh, the diluted acid. acid. As you can see on the bottle, um, I've written there that it's a 5% acetic acid dilution. So I've taken that 20% and I've diluted it um, all the way down to uh, 5% just in water. And you can see the reaction happening immediately. And what's happening is that the acetic acid is already starting to dissolve the calcium carbonate that is the limestone that makes up the matrix. Um, as I understand it, the acetic acid plus the calcium carbonate, when they react, it gives off water, it gives off carbon dioxide, which are the bubbles you see floating to the surface here, um, and it also gives off a byproduct, which is calcium acetate, which starts actually diluting the power of the acid over, over time. Uh, this is only 5% dilution, so very weak. It's uh, about the weakness of vinegar um, within within uh, your kitchen. Um, so it is a, a very weak and diluted, but you can see how aggressively it's already attacking the calcium carbonate here. I'm going to let this soak now for about two hours um, in this acid and let this reaction uh, really start working its magic. But after that two hours, um, you can see here that the, um, the solutions become very murky as all of the, uh, the calcium carbonate has started to, to dissolve. So I'm going to take that out carefully and I'm going to put it straight into a bath of water to get rid of all of the, the most of the acid on the outside um, of, this, uh, of this fossil. Um, and then using gloves, going to have a quick look at this just to see how the reaction has uh, has happened. And, um, and and as you can see, we've already started to eat away quite a lot of the um, uh, of, of the matrix between the bone. It's a bit difficult to see here because it's quite wet. But the most important thing is once you've had a quick look to put it back in the water. The theory is if you've put it in for two hours into the acid, you probably need to put it in for at least two to four hours in in water uh, before you then take it out. Out and let it dry. Now, once it's fully dried, you then get to repeat the cycle again. You would then cover this in uh, the exposed bone in a paraloid B72 and then the candle wax, and you'd submerge it for another couple of hours to get rid of further limestone. You'd then soak it again and dry it and then repeat uh, the process fully. And as you can see, we're starting to see progress. Although you might perceive that this is quite a fast process, this does need patience. So this is the side before acid. This was after eight hours, so four cycles of dipping in two-hour stints. And you can see some teeth being exposed. And this was after 18 hours, so nine cycles of a two-hour soak. And as you can see um, in this final piece, uh, we've now managed to expose quite a lot of uh, little ichthyosaur teeth that were uh, nestled between the bones, which we'd never be able to get out with mechanical tools um, and then I think there's a few more teeth exposed on the other side. So there you have it really. Hopefully that's given you um, a tour of how uh, acetic acid can be used to prepare certain types of fossils. Um, if you enjoyed this uh, please click on the subscribe button. There's more of this type of video to come. Thanks a lot.